think that's the saddest part. The way they separated the mommies and the daddies and the children in here. Because you don't need to be on your own when you've got shite going on. Gabosh are staging a production entitled One in Five here in the former Limbo Valley Workhouse. It starts on the 24th of November. We are staging drama in different places. The audience will not see the whole building until we open the So we're here today because it's the first time that the six actors, the design team of three and the production team have seen the workhouse. Today they journey around the building for the first time and that will affect what they put in it. For long, the workhouse was designed to be a horrible and nasty place. All the women lived in one side, all the men lived in the other side. The Limavati workhouse is one of the best surviving example of a workhouse. It existed as a workhouse right up until 1932, where it became the much-loved Roe Valley Hospital. It continued as a hospital right up to 98, so we brought the building back to the heart of the community and back to life again. So the women would have been in here squashed side by, there were no bedside lockers, no wardrobes, just women dying side by side by side, but basically just like animals in a bar. What will happen is when the audience come into here, the film will be projected on this wall. Uh, whenever the audience arrive in, what we're looking at is the opening shot of the, of the footage, is the young girl that is Sarah, walks in the frame. As a director and as a person that runs a theatre company, one of the great opportunities you have is whenever you can give a selection of artists that work in different fields the opportunity to create something that can make a difference. I just felt that the issue of child poverty um, needed to be looked at. Two years ago I approached four writers. Uh, there are four Irish female playwrights who I have great respect for. Morna Regan, Marina Carr, Rosemary Jenkinson and Nicola McCartney. Each of them are very concerned with kind of political and social issues and take on board their responsibility as artists and that's something that really interests me. So each audience member gets a dome umbrella that's see-through and an MP3 player. They all get brought through this gate and they get lined up here. The maximum okay. audience is 100. And what happens is we then divide that audience of 100 into four groups of 25 and each of them have guides. Now that, the reason for that is because we want to take the audience into every nook and cranny within the building. An audience of 25 will all have their own MP3 players, they have their own umbrellas and they walk to the pauper's grave and back. They still have no idea exactly how many people are in here. They reckon it could be up to 3,000. We have been working with residents from the local area and we've created an archive. We've commissioned original music from a wonderful composer called Fanula Fagan. Because one of the things a lot of people don't know, don't know is that Jimmy McCurry actually died in the, in the Lima Valley workhouse and he wrote Danny Boy and we felt that then people feel they have a connection with it. We're going to go to the uh, Nissan hut, which is around the corner here, uh, which is where we'll be staging Rosemary Jenkinson's piece. Okay, Rosemary Jenkins' play, as you all know, is the, is the four intercutting monologues that looks at uh, four people that are involved. Some of them know they are, some of them don't know they are, but they're in a staged car accident. Rev her up, clutch out, and that's me on the roar. Foot flat to the attendant, and my hand, she's a right flam machine, a right Formula one -er, and I'm curbing at Goodstale, hawking up gravel like I'm at Jensen Bunsen, or what you might call, and it is one sunny day. What a day for a burn in the car. Then I catch my eyes in the old crack mirror. Realise it's just an old beat up Ford Focus. An old granny car, like, no faster than one of them motorised babies. You see them fat old dolls flying about the pavement, so. The pieces are as much about survival. They're not about historical poverty. They're about how we live today, how we just get on with things. There's a there's brilliant wit within it. There is there is certain issues raised that are challenging. I think it's another phase, another part of the story of this place to have such a modern presentation on a brilliant old building. It just brings us right bang up where we need to be. Inevitably with a project like this, it's not about us kind of landing in as artists and creating something and then leaving again. You have to leave a legacy. We're working with the Anti-Poverty Network in Derry and they are uh, creating a package of post-project care for a lot of the residents that we've been working with so that we can somehow leave a legacy. That for me is kind of it and yeah and that, that, yeah, the kind of importance of the building, the importance of the subject matter and how a collection of artists can raise those issues and make us just think a bit differently.